Hello, my dear friends, how are you all? Myself, Dr. Deepa Gupta, your PSM mentor. As we all know that your FMG exam is over, now you must be feeling relaxed. And I think that till the result is out, these days are supposed to be the golden days of your life because we are all going to clear this exam and you are going to start your internship and preparing for your upcoming PG examinations. So you'll be getting busy. So I can say that you can enjoy these days till your result is out. And some of you must be feeling relaxed, but some of you must be having the anxiety, apprehension, palpitation about the questions what you had attempted that what is the correct answer for those questions? So we are here to discuss the some recall questions of PSM, which came in the FMG 4 June 2022 examination. As these are the recall questions, so the language of the question may not be exactly the same what has been asked in the examination. The choices may not be exactly the same and this what the students they told us we have tried to frame the question as closer to exactly what has been asked in some questions i was not able to get all the four choices also so some questions may be different so i request you all that you can either directly message me or you can write in the comment section if you think that there is some modification required in that particular question or some additional uh, uh, choice you want to add in that particular uh, question okay and uh, if i say that uh, what was the level of this uh, examination paper so i'll go with the moderate level uh, of this exam most of the questions they are asked from the high topics but they were not exactly in the common language what we usually discuss especially if we talk about the PSM around 50% of the questions were the straightforward questions and remaining 30% questions were little bit twisted questions if you know the concept then you could have answered those questions and uh, one or the two questions were not a very commonly asked question and they had been asked for the first time so as i could collect around 31 questions from my dear students and out of that uh, 31 questions i'll say around four questions were having the overlap between obstetric gynae biochemistry as well as the pediatrics and the rest 27 questions i can say that directly were related to the community medicine so Let's begin to discuss about questions, what has been asked in the exam. And I think this was the simplest question, what has been asked in the exam of the community medicine. Now, relative risk is calculated by which study, and we know that it is none other than the a cohort study. So here the correct answer is the cohort study, as we know that the odds ratio is calculated by case control study and incidence relative risk attributable and population attributable risk is calculated by the cohort study and prevalence is by cross-sectional study and population characteristics by ecological study. So the correct answer is cohort study. Now the next question is as per the NACO, National Risk Control Organization, if you are doing counseling and screening, for tuberculosis in an HIV patient in an ICTC clinic, the level of prevention is. Now here they are talking about the two things. One is they are doing the counseling. Counseling is done to prevent the development of the tuberculosis that is supposed to be an opportunistic infection in the HIV patients. So here it is dealing with the primary level prevention. As well as if they had a doubt, they are doing the screening for the tuberculosis in the HIV individuals also. So the two things they are uh, doing simultaneously. So I'll go with the best answer 
as both primary and secondary level prevention because the two activities are being done here. The next question is vaccines related and uh, three questions are asked from this vaccine section now this time and uh, first question was the vaccine given to baby at birth and we know very clearly that the three vaccines we are giving at birth provided this is an hospital delivery and we know that nowadays the most of the deliveries are taking place in hospital and they didn't mention anything also so the answer is in my mind or in our mind that it is the bcg oral polio vaccine and the hepatitis b okay so we'll go with the choices so bcg 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 so this is out because the dpt is not given at the birth it is definitely being started at six weeks of the life then uh, BCG, uh, injectable polio vaccine, no. Again, in IPV is started at six weeks, so this is out. The BCG, oral polio vaccine and hepatitis B, yes, this could be the correct answer. BCG, OPV and MR, MR is started at nine completed months. So here the correct answer is BCG, OPV and hepatitis B. Now the next is, at what time you can give the first dose of the hepatitis B vaccine to a new unit? Now many of the students had a confusion that they say that they are asking about the first dose because the dose what we are giving at the birth is supposed to be the zero dose. You might be thinking, right, but friends, they are asking that it is in the neonate. And we know the neonatal age is till one month or zero to only eight days. And we know that the first dose, if you're thinking like as what we are giving at a six weeks is also out. So the dose what we are giving first time, although that is considered as the zero dose, Sorry, not a, it's a zero, it's a zero for the OPV. It is the hepatitis a B, but dose it is actually the first dose of the hepatitis B what we are giving. So here the best answer is that it is given at birth. And then we are giving the vaccine at six weeks, 10 weeks, and the 14 weeks. And if it is a home delivery, then definitely we are not giving this uh, dose and we are giving the remaining three doses at six, 10, and 14 weeks. So here, as per the question, the best answer is that at birth. Now the next is, in a measles epidemic, the measles vaccine is given to a baby at seven months of the age. The next dose of the measles vaccine is given at. And uh, as we know that if there is any epidemic or if a baby is malnourished, so we are giving the dose of a vaccine of a measles even less than nine months or after the six months of the age, but that is actually considered as the zero dose. So, in spite of giving the dose at six, seven, or eight months, anytime it is less than a nine month, we are giving the routine measles vaccination starting from nine completed months. Okay. So here they are asking the next dose once we are there and at a seven month, the next dose as of per the routine schedule, we should start at a nine month. Now here the catch was that whatever the dose we are giving at a nine month, should it be called as a booster? No, it will not be called as a booster because the initial dose what we had given as the zero dose. So we'll consider this as a first dose of the measles. So we are giving the next dose of the measles at the nine month. It will not fall as a booster and will not give it as one and a half year, then uh, will not get, give at a preschool age. So here the correct answer is at nine months. Now, all the healthcare providers are present in the village except we know that village grassroots level workers are the TBA, ASHA, Anganwadi workers and uh, the village health guide. These are the village level workers, what we call as a grassroots level workers. So, yes, the TBA is present in the village. The ASHA is, yes, it is present in the village. Anganwadi workers, yes, it is present in the village. Some was having the confusion. They are in the Anganwadi centers or the ICDS centers, but friends, it is located in the village only. And AM, that is now the name point as a multipurpose worker field. They are posted at sub center. Although they are going to the village for uh, routine work, for the antenatal checkup, for the postnatal checkup, or sometimes to conduct the home delivery, but they are not all the time present in the village. So here, this is odd one out. So that is the answer that worker which is not present in the village. Now this is again a question asked from contraception, although we are not commonly using this contraceptive nowadays, but yes, they had asked. So the content present in the contraceptive given in the image and they had given the image on the today. 
We know that today is the market grand name of the vaginal sponges. And vaginal sponges are nothing but they are the barrier method of contraceptives. Like we had our condoms, we are having the cervical cap or the diaphragm, as well as we are having the vaginal sponges. And these vaginal sponges are incorporated with this spermicidal agent. And this spermicidal agent is none other than non oxynol 9. So these are containing the non oxynol 9. But friends, it is not an emergency contraceptive pill. Some might have thought like that and had gone with the LNG. No, this is not an emergency contraceptive pill. It is a vaginal sponge that is a barrier contraceptive containing the non oxynol 9 acting as a spermicidal agent. So the correct answer is non oxynol 9. Now, black dark is disposed of in which category? Now, it's a very repeatedly asked question, and we all know that although this is a plastic material, but this is an exception of all of the plastic material, the black bag is going in the yellow category. While all of the plastic materials are going in a red bag, but black bag is going in yellow category. So the correct answer is yellow bag. Now, next question is, a 30-year male member of the family is presenting with complaints of diarrhea. Okay, there is a diarrhea, the knee edema and the ascites. Now, on investigation, it came to know that in the grocery item, the main consumption is of the mustard oil. So, what can be the probable diagnosis? So, something is related with the mustard oil. And if we go with the choices, it is the epidemic dropsy, endemic ascites, aflatoxicosis, and latherism. So, it is all they are talking about the food activation. And we know that the condition which is related to the mustard oil because of the contamination of the argumon seeds in the mustard seed. And when you're preparing an oil, the argumon seed oil is mixing with the mustard seed oil. And this argumon seed is having the sanguinarine as the toxin. And that is causing the uh, dropsy, swelling, because of the disturbance in the pathway metabolism. Okay, now some had confusion with the ascites. Then they thought that ascites may be because of the liver damage. And yes, you might be thinking, right, but that liver damage is there and it is seen in an endemic ascites. And this is because of the pyrolizidine. That is because of the mixing of uh, acroterilla seeds in the millet. But here, the key word is that they're talking about the mustard oil. Okay, so mustard oil is responsible for epidemic dropsy only. So here, the correct answer for this is, it is the epidemic dropsy and dropsy means the swelling. So there is a swelling of the different parts of the body. Okay. So the diagnosis is epidemic dropsy. Now the next is, as per the WHO definition, the maternal deaths are. Now we all know that maternal deaths are defined as the death of a woman from the time of conception till end of the period. So any death including in the antenatal period, during the delivery, as well as the First six weeks after the delivery, that is called as the puperial period. So here the best answer is antenatal to six weeks postpartum. Yes, this could be the best answer. Antenatal to 12 weeks postpartum. No, it is not till the 12 weeks. Then only till the delivery to two weeks postpartum. No, it is an antenatal period also until the six weeks after the delivery. During the delivery only. No. So here the best answer is it is from the antenatal period, obviously including the delivery period till the six weeks postpartum. Now, another question is, the people is eating kesri dal for the last one year in that area to avoid the epidemic of latherism, all are done except. And we know that uh, the kesri dal, it is containing the boa, that is beta-oxalyl amino. Uh, oxalic acid is um, and this toxin, which is present in the uh, kesri dal, and it has been mixed with the yellow pulse and this is causing the latherism that is a spastic paralysis okay and uh, so to avoid this epidemic and it is very well clearly mentioned in your uh, 26th edition of the park and that is that intervention is done or the control of latherism is possible by vitamin c supplementation by banning the crop as well as by the removal of the toxin, either by steeping or parboiling. Okay, so we have to see the choices now that they are asking that to avoid the epidemic of the latherism, all are done except. So toxin removal, yes, we are doing a toxin removal. The crop banning, yes. Then 
deep sea supplementation no deep sea supplementation is done in the wild area endemic areas okay so this is out vitamin c supplementation yes it is present so here the correct answer which is not done is the d c supplementation the next is the trends of events of the diarrhea epidemic happening currently in an area is represented by we know that the trends of events over the time it is represented by none other than line chart okay so here the correct answer is a line chart because the bar chart pie chart and the spot map analysis they all are for the qualitative data presentation while the trends of events of the number of the diarrhea cases which are happening in that particular area is best represented by line chart now in a european country continuously the deaths are happening but no new birth is reported country is in which phase okay so the deaths are happening but no new birth is being reported what it means it means that the death rate is more than the birth rate or we can say the birth rate is less than the death rate okay pata nahi honge marte jayenge to kya hoga population will drop okay so now we'll see the choices the how high stationary phase what happens in the high stationary phase here the birth rate is high and the death rate is also very high but the birth rate is almost equal to the death rate so population is stationary now low stationary phase here the birth rate is very low and the death rate is also very low but it is almost equal to the death rate again the population is stationary but it is because of the low but and the death rate decline means the population is declining and why it is declining because here the birth rate is almost nil while the death is continuously happening so here we can say that death rate is more than the birth rate so the population is declining now in the late expansion phase what happens the birth rate is more than the death rate although the birth rate is declining but it is at a slower rate the death normal death continues but is still the birth rate is more than the death rate so it is the increase in the population size but at a slow rate so here the best answer from the given choices is it is the decline phase now comparison of life expectancy between the two countries is done by obviously we know that it is done by human developmental index because the components of hdi it is the life expectancy at birth the knowledge and it is the split into the mean years of the schooling and the expected years of the schooling and income by factor okay so the life expectancy is the part of an hdi and it is used for comparison between the two countries now human poverty index it is the level of deprivation so it is not considering the life expectancy the dali is the disability adjusted life years it is the years lost with the disability or due to the premature death again it is not included the quality is a quality adjusted life years the years lived in the good quality with adjustment so again it is out so here the correct answer is it is hdi a person lost both of his hands in machine for that he lost his job and unable to write and do his machine work what is the type of impairment now here they are asking about impairment and we know what is an impairment impairment is an anatomical the structural loss of body part okay so here what part is lost it is the hands are lost so that is an impairment obviously because of this impairment the patient is in a state of disability and this is a permanent disability so patient is now unemployed and patient is in a handicap stage also but here they are talking only about what is its type of impairment so disability it is not an impairment the loss of both the hand that is an anatomical a structural loss so yes this is the impairment unemployment it is a sort of handicap the no machine work it is again a type of the disability that is a loss of normal function so again this is out so here the best answer from the given choices is loss of both hands that is the impairment again this was a very commonly asked question but now they had given with a little bit twist okay and what the twist was a p1 l1 lady p1 l1 is actually an obstetric term they use para when with a one live issue okay the lady reported to the clinic 6 weeks post partum 
means after the six weeks, means after the completion of the preperial phase. And who doesn't want a baby for next three years? The best contraceptive is. Now, if they had asked state forward that what is the best contraceptive for the spacing, you get a very well answered as in property. If they ask what is the best contraceptive advice just after the delivery, you get answered the property. Okay. But they had asked that six weeks after the uh, delivery. Now, we all know that uh, PPICD or the postpartum ICD is usually inserted within the first 48 hours after the delivery. And if it is not inserted at that time, then we are putting in I, you know, copper ICD or any ICD after six weeks. Okay. So, here as presumably the baby, uh, this lady must be breastfeeding. So, we are not giving an OCPs because they are not given in the first six months after the delivery. Now, condoms, uh, again, they are not having a very high success rate and uh, it is very clearly said that they don't want to undergo the repeated abortions for the next few years. Now, copper tea, yes, should be a given. And progesterone only pills, yes, they can be given. But again, the lady has to take a tablet daily and sometimes it can lead to the menstrual irregularities also. So here from the given choices, the best answer is it is a copper tea, which is inserted for 3 years, 5 years or 10 years, depending upon the different uh, brands of the copper tea. And here the best answer for this question is the copper tea insertion. Now correct statement about population pyramid. Okay, now first we look about the population pyramid. And population pyramid is uh, made for individual country and it is mainly representing the three qualities or the three parameters that uh, one thing is that height is representing the life expectancy. Then uh, symmetry is representing the sex ratio and the shape is representing the birth weight. Okay, so these are the three parameters what has been calculated. And we know that in those countries where the base is broad, it means the high fertility rate is there. The height is more, it means the life expectancy is more. And it is asymmetrical, it means the sex ratio is abnormal. So now looking at the choices, that base is representing the fertility. Yes, this is a correct answer. The height increases is the low life expectancy. No, if height is increasing, the life expectancy is more. So this is out. The middle part is the male is more than a female. No, middle part is not showing. It is the overall symmetry of this uh, pyramid. So this is also out. The broad base means the more working population. No, these are the newborn babies, so they are not a working population. So here, this is also out. So here, the best answer for this question is the base is corresponding to fertility. Now, again, identify this image. Now, here in this image, they had clearly mentioned that uh, this is the a graph showing the birth rate. This is a graph showing the death rate. This is a population a growth. And these are the various phases of the demography cycle that is a high stationary, early expansion, late expansion, and low stationary, and then the decline phase of the reversal phase. So this is actually a demographic transition of the population of a country from the high stationary phase towards the late expansion or the low stationary phase. So this is not a population, a cycle. This is a demographic transition because demographic uh, cycle was not given in the choices as I had been told by the student. So the closest answer for this is it is the demographic transition. I could not collect the other choices. Friends, if you know the other choices, please let me know so I can complete my question. Okay. So from the choices, the best answer is demographic transition. Which of the following are true for PSC except? PSC is the primary health center and population covering is the 30,000 population. It is a correct answer. We can conduct the delivery. It is a first referral. No, this is not a first referral because the first referral are the second level care centers and the community health centers of the district hospital. So these are this is, these centers are the primary uh, level care giving centers, including the village workers, sub centers, and the primary health centers. So they are not a first referral centers. I could not have a, a fourth choice. So here the best answer is it is not a True for PSC is first reply. All are present at community health center except. Again, friends, there is a confusion in the choices what I had received. That uh, surgeon is present. Yes, it is a, a true uh, statement. It is a first referral unit. Yes, it is also a true statement um, for this community health center. Now, there was a confusion that uh, one was a blood storage. Yes, blood is being stored at a community health center. And there was a doubt about the fourth, okay? And uh, as the remaining three 
uh, was a component of the CAC and they were saying that it was something related to the neonatal care. So I can presume that it must be the intensive neonatal care, which is not being done at community health center. So this would be the uh, answer for this question that it is not present at community health center because rest three are present at community health center. 30 trackers have gone for a camp for one week. The best method of the disposal of the waste generated is. Now, it is very clearly mentioned in your PAR test of 26 edition that uh, for the small camps, the burial is supposed to be the best method of waste disposal. Okay. And here they are saying that they had gone for a camp for one week. So, dumping means we are throwing the waste here and there. That is not recommended. Burial, we are burying the waste underground. So, we had made a pit and daily we are putting a waste inside. And once we are coming out from that camp, we are closing that pit. So, burial is preferred. The composting, it is not possible in a, a camp areas. And manure pit, it is usually done in the rural areas. Okay. So, this is also not done for camp area. So, the best answer is it is burial. Now, the next is on the future day, four to eight persons sit in front of a large group of audience to talk about topic. Director of an hospital opens the meeting, welcomes the audience and introduces the speakers. He introduces the topic briefly and invites the speakers to present their point of view. There is no specific agenda, no order of the speaking, no set speech. In the end, the audience is invited to take part, identify the matter. Okay, so here the one clue is that four to eight members are present, but four to eight members are also present in the symposium. And the next is that uh, he is introducing the speakers, inviting the speakers to put their point of view. But a more important point is that there is no specific agenda, no fixed topic has been already been given, no order of the speaking that anyone can speak in any order, and no prepared speech is being made. That is a component of the symposium. Okay. So here all are going in favor of panel discussion. And I think they have taken this line word to word from the uh, PARC test book. And it is very, very clearly mentioned the same headlines that in a panel discussion, the four to eight persons who are qualified to talk about the topic sit and discuss on a given problem on a topic in front of a large group of the audience. The panel comprises a chairman, moderator, and from four to eight speakers, the chairman opens the meeting, welcomes the a group and introduces the panel speaker. He introduces the topic briefly and invites the panel speakers to present their point of the view. There is no specific agenda, no order of the speaking, no set speeches. The success of the panel depends upon the chairman and he has to keep the discussion going and develop the a train of the thoughts. And after the main aspects of the subject was explored, the audience is invited to take part. Okay, so almost a word to word has been mentioned as a statement. So here the answer is panel discussion, not the symposium, because the points going against the symposium is that no specific agenda, no order of the speaking, and no set of speech. And in workshop, workshop, the experts or the uh, members, they are taking the experience or they are gaining the information or they are gaining the knowledge under an expert. So that is a, a workshop. Okay. So, and the uh, seminar, in the seminar, again, that a few members are there and they are, uh, the, the talk is being given by the experts and this is to improve the knowledge of the person who are attending the seminar. So, the correct answer for this is, it is panel discussion. A group conducted a mass gathering on hand wash awareness. Now, correct sequence of events are, again, this is a, uh, question related to health education and this is also very clearly mentioned in a PARC test book that uh, there is a sender who gives the message through a channel it is reaching to the receiver and once it is reaching to the receiver then we have to see about the awareness that we are spreading the awareness then we have to look for the interest of the uh, receiver whether they are interested or not in receiving the information then we have to evaluate that what they had uh, grasped or what they had gained. And then finally is the behavioral change that is the adoption of that information. So this is the correct sequence is the awareness, interest, evaluation and the adoption. So here the correct answer for this is awareness, interest, evaluation and adoption of the 
uh, health education about the hand wash awareness. All tests are done before the black lung use and exit. We know that uh, under the NAPU guidelines that we are testing the hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV 1 and 2, malaria and the VDRL for syphilis. These are the five tests we are doing before the black transmission. So hepatitis B is done, 1 and 2 HIV done, hepatitis C is done. So A is not done. So this is the answer because they are asking that all tests are done before the black transfusion except. A two-year baby is having the height for age status is less than minus two standard deviation. Okay, we know that any value up to the a mean of plus minus of the two standard deviation is considered as normal. And they are saying that height for age is less than minus two standard deviation means it is beyond the normal range. And we know that a low height for age it is suggestive of the chronic malnutrition or it is the stunting. So here the correct answer is stunting. So I could uh, get only the two choices, the rusting and the stunting. Rusting is if there is a low weight for that particular height, it is the rusting. And if there is a low height for the age, it is the stunting. So rusting is suggestive of acute malnutrition. The stunting is suggestive of chronic malnutrition. Baby is coming for a regular checkup in the OPD. His growth chart shows that a weight of a baby is between 85th to 95th percentile. The child status is. Now we know if a baby weight is beyond the 95th percentile, that is beyond the plus 2 standard deviation is towards an over upper side, it is towards an obesity. But if it is between the 85 to 95th percentile, these babies are the overweight babies. And severely acute malnourished babies, if the uh, weight percentile is below the minus three standard deviation or below the first percentile. So here the correct answer for this question is that these are the overweight babies. Very commonly asked image, repeatedly asked, identify the vitamin deficiency in the given image. As we know that here the dermatitis is shown and uh, it is the castle like appearance. So dermatitis and this is seen in the pallagra and pallagra is because of the deficiency of vitamin B3 or niacin. If a wide range of the values are present in community, then the central tendency is measured by. We know that if outliers are present or the wide range of the values are present, then mean is not of a very important point. And uh, the median means, yes, if you are arranging the values in ascending or the descending order, the middle value or the average of the middle value is preferred if it's an outliers are there. And mode is the most commonly offering value. Again, this is not preferred if the outliers are there. So the central tendency parameters, it means either the mean, median and the mode. And they're saying the wide range of the values means the outliers are present. So here the best answer is it is the median, okay? Because the mean deviation, it is a measurement of the dispersion. It is not a central tendency. A two-year baby is reported to the subcenter with complaints of fever and cough for two days with a chest in joint. His respiratory rate is 38 per minute. The next step is. Now here there was a confusion. Some students were saying that the chest in drawing was present and some were saying the chest in drawing was not present. So please, uh, my dear students, that if a chest in drawing is present, then your answer may go as a case of a severe pneumonia. And we know that in the severe pneumonia cases, we are giving them an antibiotic first and then doing their referral as they are coming in a pink category of NLCI group. But if chest in drawing was not present, then answer may change as a pneumonia to the clinical treatment. So uh, I just want your help, your uh, suggestions that what was actually given in this question and please write in the comment box so I can modify this question. So I am giving you both the choices that if the chest in drawing was present, then answer will be the C pneumonia antibiotic in the referral and if the chest in drawing was not present, then could be the answer as pneumonia with clinical treatment. Although the next two questions what we are going to discuss is commonly being uh, discussed in your obstetric dining classes. The drugs used for termination of an eight-week pregnancy, we know that we are talking about the medical abortion and we know that in medical abortion we are giving first the mifepristone followed by misoprostol. Okay, so 
Mysoprost first, this is out. Only mysoprost, this is also out. Only mifepristone, this is also out. So if you are not knowing the dose of a mifepristone, but you know the sequence. So here the mifepristone, 200 milligram followed by mysoprost. Although they have not mentioned the dose, it is the 600 microgram of mysoprost is being given. Or some books they write 800 uh, micrograms of mysoprost also. The best, uh, what practically we are using, it is the 200 milligram of mifepristone followed by 800 microgram of mysoprostone. So here it is the best answer for the given choices is uh, mifepristone 200 milligram followed by mysoprost. Then uh, more than one doctor signature is needed for doing an MTP of. Now some students were saying that this greater than sign was given and some had skipped this sign. Those who had read it, a one doctor signature is needed for doing an NTP. They had gone with the answer as up to 12 to 20 weeks. Okay. But here, the most of the students are saying that uh, greater than sign was there. So, if it is written that more than a one doctor signature is needed for doing an NTP, then obviously, as per the new NTP guidelines, NTP Act guidelines, that answer is for 22 24 weeks of gestation okay so friends these were the recall questions of psm june fmg 2022 examination and again i'll say as these are the recall questions so exactly the language may not be the same what has been asked and the choices may not be or options may not be exactly the same and some are missing and uh, because of that, in one or two questions, the answer may be fluctuating, okay? So, I request you all that please help me and write if there is any uh, modification you require or you demand in the question, any extra choices you want to add up, so I can uh, modify those questions, okay? So, I wish that all of you should pass. So, wishing you all the very best, okay? So, bye-bye. Good luck.